I feel very protective of you. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 movies that went from being loved to hated. Times are changing, Betty. These nerds are a threat to our way of life. You go on and cry. I'm not crying. You embarrass me. You embarrass yourself. For this list, we'll be looking at films that were initially adored, or at least largely liked upon release, but later grew to be widely despised. They don't need to have been universally hated or loved at any one time, so long as there was an eventual and notable shift in the general consensus. Which of these movies do you think gets a bad rap? Let us know in the comments. Number 10. I now pronounce you Chuck and Larry. While critics were quick to lambast this one out of the gate, it does star Adam Sandler after all. Audiences weren't quite on the same page, as the film amassed nearly $190 million at the worldwide box office. We really pulled this one out of our asses. Bad choice of words there, Larry. Bad choice of words. It came out in 2007, back when resistance to homophobic humour and stereotyping wasn't quite as immediate. Still, it wasn't long before people started to take issue with it. You know what, I cannot deal with sleeping next to your stupid ugly face tonight, so don't bother coming in the bedroom. Oh, wouldn't dream of it, honey! Sure, you could say I now pronounce you Chuck and Larry ultimately happens upon an accepting message by its conclusion, but it certainly takes a lot of cheap shots along the way, to the point that it becomes way less funny and way more uncomfortable. What is with the world? It yeah. just makes me so sad and gay to think of that kind of behavior. As if the inclusion of Asian caricatures wasn't bad enough. Number nine, American Beauty. I'm sorry. You got the wrong idea. This is just the first of many Best Picture winners on this list, but the problems with it don't just stem from it beating out more worthy contenders like The Green Mile. Rather, among any number of criticisms from style to script, it's the content inherent to the plot that makes for much more uncomfortable viewing today. Yeah, well, at least I'm not ugly. Yes, you are. And you're boring. And you're totally ordinary. And you know it. Though more of an ensemble piece, it largely centres around Lester Burnham, a middle-aged suburban dad who develops an infatuation for his daughter's teenaged friend, something that's taken far more seriously in the age of the Me Too movement. Could he be any more... pathetic? While Kevin Spacey's performance as Burnham was praised for its nuance, the subsequent misconduct allegations against the actor in real life tinge it with an eerie malevolence. Number eight, Driving Miss Daisy. Yes, Miss Daisy. Go back, go back this minute. Miss Daisy, look, look. Y'all under the picture, Wiggly. See? Another entry that won Best Picture at the Academy Awards, Driving Miss Daisy, starring Jessica Tandy and Morgan Freeman, was already kind of dated when it came out, relying heavily on old fashioned race relations around which to structure its characters. And while plot-wise that might not be a bad place to start, many today don't find the film, which is based on a play, to be nearly as nuanced as was thought back in 1989. I don't need you. I don't want you. And I don't like you saying I'm rich. Well, I won't say it no more. Is that what you and I dare to talk about in the kitchen? No, Miss Daisy, oh, no. I hate this. I hate being discussed behind my back in my own house. We obviously understand there's a historical significance to the setup, since it's set in the 1960s. But without a more fleshed out modern day lens, it just doesn't stand the test of time for the modern era. You go on and cry. I'm not crying. Number seven, Revenge of the Nerds. Oh, no! Nerds! 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 Come on, Lewis, let's go. Who oh boy. Where to start with this one? While Revenge of the Nerds was originally regarded as harmless fun, people later realised it was actually the exact opposite. At its core, the film is about a fraternity of nerds that sees to getting back at the jock fraternity for pushing others around, a formula that would be emulated in numerous sex comedies in its wake. What's very troubling, however, is the misogynistic ways the sorority girls are treated, as the nerds take to voyeuristic pranks to get back at them as well. <laughs> nerd saw me naked. Worse, the primary nerd even resorts to tricking a jock's girlfriend into sleeping with him, a tactic that's rewarded with adoration instead of censure. 
All in all, this movie is now seen as very problematic. Times are changing, Betty. These nerds are a threat to our way of life. Number 6. Garden State Garden State was far and away the indie darling of 2004, with writer-director star Zach Braff receiving heaps of praise. It was lauded for its depiction of misplaced identity in the face of adulthood, but many don't respond to its themes as they once did. It's, just, it's dumb. It's dumb. It's an awful idea. I'm not going to do it, okay? Furthermore, the film has since been criticised for its use of the manic pixie dream girl archetype. It also doesn't help that Braff's image has been rather dimmed in the 2010s, as his decision to use Kickstarter to fund his next project, Wish I Was Here, which was significantly worse, was met with far less enthusiasm. <sighs> there is so much bad news all at once. Number 5. The Amazing Spider-Man oh, I'm in trouble. Back when rebooting Spider-Man after just a five-year hiatus seemed hasty, 2012's The Amazing Spider-Man almost seemed refreshing. But let's be honest, that was largely because it got to follow up Spider-Man 3. And then came the overly ambitious Amazing Spider-Man 2, which made the other aforementioned sequel look restrained by comparison. The plug was quickly pulled on this iteration of the franchise, and Sony struck a deal with Marvel to bring the character to the MCU. Tom Holland's subsequent portrayal gave us everything we ever wanted in a Spider-Man, making the admittedly decent Andrew Garfield look pedestrian by comparison. Sorry, Miss Ritter won't happen again, I promise. Don't make promises you can't keep, Mr. Parker. Number 4. Crash The love for this movie was pretty short-lived. All right. If we can't duck this thing, we're going to have to neutralize it. Ironically, winning Best Picture was probably the worst thing that could have happened to it, as beating out the much more deserving Brokeback Mountain forced people to put it under a much harsher microscope. Sure, we're aware of the cultural melting pot that is Los Angeles, but the way Crash depicts it is nothing short of heavy-handed. You embarrass me. You embarrass yourself. Worse, its interracial interactions can't help but feel contrived, leaving moments that are meant to be the most moving or heartbreaking to come across as false. Okay. Don't touch me! Don't touch me! Keep away from me! Lady, I'm, I'm, trying, I'm trying to help you. Its cast does all it can to support such a lofty narrative, but no actor can really disguise lapses in judgement inherent in the script. Number 3. Shakespeare in Love Okay, last Best Picture winner, we swear. Strangely enough, it all turns out well. How? Oh. I don't know. It's a mystery. Frankly, critics were in love with Shakespeare in Love, and audiences seemed to take to it as well, as it proved to be a steady earner up to and through the Oscars ceremony. However, everything changed when it stole the big prize from Saving Private Ryan, easily one of the greatest war films ever made. Ernest. Reportedly, this was achieved through aggressive and not-so-friendly awards campaigning by producer Harvey Weinstein, whose subsequent controversies stretch a mile long. Needless to say, people don't find Shakespeare in Love nearly as witty and charming as they used to. Take it down stone by stone, I want to plow it into the ground and sown with quicklime! Number 2. Star Wars Episode 7: The Force Awakens the hype for this movie was unreal, as it marked the first continuation of the original saga in over 30 years, and the reception to it proved it was worth the wait, with the only real gripe coming from longtime fans who claimed its story clung too closely to a new hope. Chewie, we're home. Then the sequels happened, and any goodwill left over virtually disappeared. I'm ending all of this. The tree, the text, the Jedi. I'm gonna burn it down. Granted, it's hardly one film's fault for what happens in its follow-ups, but the fact is that many fans feel The Last Jedi and The Rise of Skywalker largely spat in the face of what their immediate predecessor set up. Let the past die. Kill it if you have to. As a result, it's hard for those fans to be invested anymore in anything that happens in The Force Awakens, seeing as how they were so disappointed in the ultimate destination of the series as a whole. People are counting on us. The galaxy is counting on us. Solo, we'll figure it out. We'll use the Force. That's not how the Force works. 
Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. The Birth of a Nation This one is really over the top. While the technical achievements this film realised can never be taken away, the content is so offensively appalling it cannot be overlooked today. D.W. Griffith's The Birth of a Nation details the reconstruction of the southern United States following the Civil War, a period fraught with strife. The film's portrayal of African Americans, white actors caricaturing black people in theatrical makeup, as being unruly vagrants who exist only to uproot the white way of living is beyond atrocious. Not only that, but it depicts the Ku Klux Klan as being heroic saviours, and not the monstrous organisation it really is and was. <laughs> Yes, it's a milestone for film, but it's backwards in nearly every other respect. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.